<clears throat> Good evening YouTube. I'm in Saguaro National Park in southern Arizona and uh, it's about 9 30 at night and my plan is to photograph the Saguaro cactus at night with uh, star trails in the background. Uh, I'm going to use a similar technique that I used when I was in Mojave National Preserve with the Joshua trees where I used uh, flashes to uh, to illuminate the trees. Here I'm going to use flashes to illuminate the cactuses and, uh, and then go for that star trails or, uh, or maybe star points um, in the background. So I've got a nice stand of saguaro here that I scouted earlier today and uh, yeah so here we go. In the first part of this video we'll cover the field shooting technique and then in the second part we'll cover the post-processing. I also want to pause here to acknowledge Nick Carver, whose YouTube video of several years ago inspired the concept behind this photo shoot. So thank you, Nick Carver, for your inspiration. All right, I know you really can't see the composition here, but I've got a nice stand of saguaro in front of me. Um, I've got the camera set at F4, ISO 1600, and uh, I've got a three minute exposure on the intervalometer. So. What I'm going to do is uh, take a series of photos. I'm going to start off with the cactuses. I'm going to ex flash them with uh, different flashes, different colored gels. Just going to experiment with different um, different lighting arrangements and uh, and so on. And take a series of photos like that. I'm then going to refocus for the stars and take a long exposure there. So the three minute uh, exposure give me time to kind of move around and flash the cactuses from different different angles and uh, it'll be pretty experimental and then I can stack all these images together um, in post-production and uh, so that's the plan should be fun and of course you can't see me here in the dark as I move around the scene to flash the cacti here with white flash three times on the left and three times on the right Okay, first iteration, um, I think everything's just a little too bright. Still too much ambient light. There is a uh, about a one-eighth moon behind me illuminating the scene. Um, I'm going to drop the ISO from 1600 to 800 and increase the uh, aperture from f4 to f5.6. I guess that's decreased the size of it. Um, so that's a two-stop reduction in exposure. And uh, I was flashing about three times on the left, three times on the right. I might reduce that to about two on each side. Um, it's a very iterative process, but uh, there's my first iteration. Um, the histogram looks kind of okay. I mean, I, there's nothing overexposed. There are some flashing uh, overexposure indications on the image, but it's not really that overexposed too bad. But anyway, I'm going to make those changes now and we'll try again. So here's how the next image turned out. I also waited for the moon to set before taking this image, which greatly reduced the ambient light. Here the flash illumination clearly dominates, and I think I have the flash exposures pretty well dialed in now. So next, I started adding colored gels to my flashes. First I shot a series with red gels on the left side of the saguaro, and then I shot a series with blue gels on the right side. So these are the colored gels I'm using to color my flashes. It's basically a sample pack of a couple hundred of them that I bought about 25 years ago. They are really intended to be a sample pack, so you would look through these, decide which gels you want, and then order full sheets to go over studio lights. But I found that the sample pack themselves were great for portable flashes. I think I only paid a few dollars for these about 25 years ago. They cost more now and can be ordered via the link in the video description down below. All right, so here are some of the photos I took, which I have already converted from RAW to TIFF file format. Now all these images were taken from a tripod mounted camera, and they all have identical framing. So I'm using a 19 millimeter lens, and all of my exposures are at f5.6 and ISO 400. Each exposure is about 30 to 60 seconds long to give me time to walk around in the dark and fire off the flashes. The cacti are far enough away from the camera that both the cacti and the stars are all in focus at f5.6. So I didn't need to do any focus stacking. So we have this first image here. I popped the flash four to five times from the left and four to five times from the right. 
This image is without any colored gels. We will get to colored gels in a minute. Now this image was shot in daylight white balance 5400 Kelvin, which is sort of the default I have set in my camera. But since I'm shooting raw format, I can adjust the white balance later as I convert from raw to TIFF. So here now is the same image processed with a white balance of 3400 Kelvin. I really like the background sky at this white balance, but the cacti looks awful to me. So what if I take this foreground from the 5400 Kelvin shot and combine it with the background from the 3400 Kelvin shot? I like that. You can see here in Photoshop, the 3400 Kelvin image layer stacked on top of the 5400 Kelvin image layer. I then carefully made this mask here so that only the background sky is selected. And then I made some exposure adjustments in this layer here, and then cropped the bit here for a final image. I really like that. Okay, let's look at some images with the colored gels. For a lot of my images, and for what I want to do for combining them, I flashed a bit too much from the front of the cacti. This image I'm flashing probably about 60 degrees off to the left. So here in this image, I'm at least 90 degrees from the left, perhaps even more, to almost rim light the cacti from one side. So again, I fired the flash with the red gel about four to five times here. And here is that same image now, but processed at a white balance of 3400 Kelvin. I really like that. The image is a little off balance with this one little cactus on the lower left hand corner, but that won't be a problem in the end. Okay, here now is the shot taken with the blue gel on the right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these last two images. I'm going to take the red illuminated cacti and the sky from this image on the right and bring in the blue illuminated cacti from the image on the left. So first I have the red image here loaded in Photoshop. Now I'm going to drop the blue cacti on top, which comes in as a smart object. I'm going to rasterize that layer. Now normally I would like to use Photoshop to align the layers, just in case there's any small difference between the two. However, Photoshop struggles with this because the stars have moved relative to the cactus in the two images, and that confuses the auto alignment. So I'm just going to have to rely on my solid tripod to have kept the two images aligned well. Okay, now I'm going to take my blue cacti layer and switch its blending mode to lighten. What this does is it takes only the pixels from the blue layer that are brighter than the red layer. And so because I use this rim lighting where the blue flashes are basically on the opposite side of the cacti from the red flashes, I get really interesting combined lighting. That's starting to look pretty good. But we do have one big problem. If we zoom in, you can now see that we've doubled up all of our stars. We have stars from the blue image and we have stars from the red image. So I'm going to apply a layer mask over the blue layer to mask out the sky. And now they're gone. In fact, because my camera was fixed solid to my tripod throughout the entire shoot, all I really had to do is copy the mask I had made from the image that had no color gels and reuse it with these red and blue images here. And the red cactus in the lower left is now balanced with the blue grasses and the cholla cactus in the lower right. Finally, I'll add a curves layer to brighten up the image a bit. And I thought this log in the lower right was a bit of a hot distraction. So I added this exposure adjustment to tame it down a bit. This is definitely different from the natural light landscape photography I typically do, but I like it. And there's a lot of fun to make. A little something different from Saguaro National Park. Thanks for joining me in this little adventure, and be sure to join me as we continue our landscape photography road trip up into southern Utah. Bye for now.